Yo, what's up? We out here. We in these streets trying to get three degrees buffer. It is late. I'm not gonna lie. I'm tired. It's like 12 39, 12 45 a.m. We out here in these streets. Oh my. But I had some things that I needed to share. Had to get off my chest. You know what I'm saying? And one of them has to do with this paper. All right. This paper that is due in like eight days. All right. <laughs> but I have good news. I had an epiphany. And Originally, my plan was going to be to do a history of mission paper on the history of missions in Micronesia. Uh, I broadened that a little bit from just Palau because I thought I'd have more opportunity for more sources and uh, just a better chance of actually having content to put into the paper. But in talking with, I had a conversation with uh, one of my coworkers over lunch here, we have staff worship, staff worship. We have staff lunch, uh, usually every Tuesday, Wednesday, and on Wednesday, I happen to sit down and it's always random. Like you never know who you're gonna be sitting next to. There's a couple tables and there's about 30 of us. So it's it's always a lot of fun. But I ended up sitting across from a coworker. She was there with her husband and it was really cool. Like she asked me about the doctor and how long I was gonna be in the area and some of the things I was doing. and. You know, anytime that these conversations about missions come up, like I'm all for it. And turns out that she'd done some mission work, he'd done some, uh, and she has a nephew on her side of the family. He has a nephew on his side of the family that both served in the same place, I think, something like that, uh, out in Thailand, I believe. So shout out to Thailand and the missionaries out there. And Cambodia is pretty close too. So. Um, Tiago and Katarina, shout out to y'all out there as well. And just talking about how like going to do mission isn't always just about here's the Bible and believe this and understand it the exact way I'm telling you and you're good to go. Like sometimes it's just showing up and being Christ-like in a place without even mentioning the spiritual stuff and being okay with that which is a challenge for Adventist Christians to do that. But being like Jesus, um, we do have the, the teaching and preaching side of who Jesus was and how he operated. But we also have the healing and being and, and the serving aspect of who he was as well. So both matter, not just one more so than the other. And I think depending on the context, and the place that we find ourselves in, one may be more effective than the other one. So it was a really cool conversation on that. And uh, there, I, I'll only say this for now. I don't want to put too much out there because I actually don't know if I'm able to talk about what's going on. But there could be some cool opportunities uh, that came out of that conversation regarding mission stuff. So, you know, stay tuned. Stay tuned. We try to do things out here for the sake of the mission. And it's pretty exciting when random conversations lead in certain directions. So, you know, God's blessings and uh, inspiration on those projects and we'll, we'll see how they go. But anyways, it was interesting because uh, we were talking about the papers and the things that I had to do. And I was talking about the emphasis on student missions that my dissertation is supposed to be. And I don't know why, like, I was a missionary, I was a student missionary in Palau. So when I think student missions, my mind goes to Palau automatically. And so it was, it's easy for me to think, well, I'm doing my research protocols and I wanna do my dissertation on student missions and I'm doing this history of mission paper also on student missions, right? Even though that's about Palau and this is actually about student missions. Like one of them is about, I'm trying to make sure I can say this right. It's late at night, so you know, bear with me. Like one of them is about the the history of student missions or missions in general in Palau. The other one is about student missions period. But I realized it doesn't really make sense for me to do um my history of mission paper on the history of missions in Micronesia. It would make more sense for me to do that history of mission paper on the history of student missions, period. Okay? Finally got there. Finally got there. 
But that's what I should be focusing it on because that's going to better inform my research and the direction that I take for the dissertation, right? So yes, for as much as I love Palau and would love to know that history, and I've already started the research in that area um, and found some cool stuff, by the way, I think it makes more sense to study the history of student missions. How did this thing start? Who, who's behind that? And I have some information on this, this already because of doing research for the research protocols. So it's like, it fits in line a lot better to do it like that. And I'm seeing what the professors are saying about research is very true. It's so easy to get an idea in your mind about the direction you wanna go, the thing you wanna do. And this next really cool idea comes up and you wanna do that, but it's not in line with the main thing. So I'm, I'm trying so hard to, <laughs> to focus everything that I'm doing in this doctoral program in line with the dissertation to make the next steps easier because I've already put the work in. It doesn't make sense for me to divert that energy that I'm going to have to spend again anyway in this direction on this side, even though this is something that's well worth researching and studying and knowing about. And that's the hard part. You got to make those decisions. So that was my little epiphany uh, on this one here, realizing that, wait a second, I have an assignment that is 100% in line with this other assignment from a different class I'm doing. And I was going in two different directions with them instead of moving in harmony with them. And I believe that finding that harmony between them, not only does it inform what I'm going to do with the history of mission paper better because I've already looked up some of these things and I have a starting point from what I looked up for my research protocol assignment, which is the point. I'm also opening myself up to more potential information. I don't just have to pick what it looked like maybe in Micronesia, but now I can look at in Europe, in Africa, in America, North and South America. Like I can, I can look at student missions and the impact and where it starts in those stories all over the world. So I really like unlocked uh, the, the library, so to speak, of what I can use and what I have access to by taking this approach. And so it's, it's pretty cool to do that. And this weekend uh, is when I plan to at least get started on this paper that's gonna be due in about eight days. Yeah, eight days, I think that's what it was. So it's, <laughs> yeah, we out here. We out here, we're gonna get it done one way or the other. So yeah, pray, pray for your boy, you know what I'm saying? S send him up, send one up real quick. I appreciate that, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but it's gonna be fun and I'm looking forward to it. And it's, I think just enjoying the research process, that's what uh, my coworker's husband asked me like, do I, am I feeling fulfilled? Am I feeling like it's worth it that I'm gaining something from it? And the answer is yes. It's a resounding yes. And I like that. Uh, it's so crazy thinking where I was as a student in middle school and high school to now where I am on the doctorate level and actually enjoying this after not giving two cents about it back then. But hey, things change. But anyways, I'm gonna get off of this thing for now. I do have to make another video on a completely different topic, so I'm going to do that, but I'm going to let y'all go for this one right here, and I'll catch you in the next one, all right? Peace.